Hello everyone, it's Kevin, and let's skip the introductions this time, because um, I need to say this while it's on my mind. I didn't rehearse this, I didn't write it, I'm hoping it might point across, but... Okay, here's the thing. I was watching Monday Matt, uh, yeah, Mundane Matt's Suicide Squad review, and I was... This came after I watched the movie channel's review of Suicide Squad for... Suicide Squad from Rob the Movie Critic. And here's the thing. The story with Suicide Squad is that, critically, it is getting thrashed by the critics. Including me. You can read my half-a-star review below. It's, uh... It was not good. It was so not good. I mean, it was amazing how bad it was. It is so bad like, so unpleasant to watch this movie that it had me yearning for the old days of Superman for the Quest for Peace and Batman and Robin because it's like, okay, those are bad, but I can laugh at how bad they are. I can truly laugh at how bad those movies are. Suicide Squad, I'm watching it, and it's like, this is just wrong on every level. It doesn't make sense. The characters are not likable. They're not well-developed. It's so obvious that they're selling us future movies. And here's the thing. Okay, so I said I wasn't going to do an intro, and I ended up doing an intro. Go fig. Anyway. And he's reviewing it like a comic book fan. Like, he is like going like, okay... Like, here's the thing. As a fan of these characters, I like how they were portrayed. I like what they did with the logo. I like what they did this. I sent a lot of Jim Carrey in Jared Leto's Joker performance, which, first of all, Jim Carrey didn't play Joker. He played, played Riddler. And secondly, what are you talking about? Jim Carrey was jumping around in a high-pitched voice and telling jokes and Jared Leto's performance of anything seemed kind of like a mix between Nicholson and Ledger. Like, it was pretty subdued except for the action sequences where he was hardcore and occasionally laughed. Just saying. And that might have been enough to get me to rant about this. But not enough. Like, you know, one person's opinion, of course. Then I saw Mundane Bats review. At least, I got through 18 minutes of the 30-minute review before it was like, I just had to turn it off. I mean, I like his videos. I like most of the stuff I'm subscribed to him. But, wow, when he's wrong, he's so, so wrong. And he's doing the same thing. Talking about, oh, it's a comic book fan. This movie's not perfect. You know, Rotten Tomatoes critics, they aren't audience members. They're not paying to see the movie. Like, like, the, like, that matters? Do people... Did people who paid to see Freddy Got Fingered like the movie any more than the critics who got to see it for free? And so, bottom line, these two reviews combined means I have to just say something. I need to say, this is gonna feel... This is gonna be hard to hear. But, comic book fans, you need a reality check. The critics are 100% right about how bad this movie is. They are 100% right about how bad Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice is, and Man of Steel is pretty bad, too. Uh, it's uh, not nearly as bad. It's not painful bad. But, uh, face it, I mean, it's... Like, it's not a well-developed story. Like, the villains are losers. Like, you know, they're not accomplishing things... Here's the thing, okay, let me get to why what Mundane Matt said bothered me. He said the reason the critics are not liking the DCU, which is the DC Extended Universe, um, I don't know what the algorithm is for it anymore, it's like, but they seem to still like the Marvel movies, and he pinpoints it to 2008, no, to not 2008, 2005, when Batman Begins came out, when which, you know, was a really good movie, and even Roger Ebert said, this is the Batman movie I have been waiting my whole life for. And then a few days later, The Dark Knight came out and totally blew everyone's mind away. I put it as the best film of the year, and it is still one of my favorite movies. The same year, 
Iron Man came out. Or the year before Iron Man came out, I don't know. Um, and, and Marvel has been doing consistently good since then, for the most part. Not all their movies have been good. In fact, Avengers Age of Ultron have, was pretty downright terrible. But Marvel movies in the moment have been pretty enjoyable. And in Matt's opinion, we're going into the DC movies expecting things to be established. And expecting them to be like Marvel when they're not. They're different franchises. They're setting up different things. No! That is not what the critics want. The critics are very aware that the DC movies are not Marvel movies. That's not our issue. That is so not the issue. Our issue is that the DC movies are awful. Batman vs. Superman was good for an hour. And then it started selling us the Justice League in a few years. Then you have Suicide Squad, where they spend 30 minutes pretty much checking off a list of characters. Like, oh, this is this character, this is this character, this is this character. Barely introducing who they are. We don't get a chance to know them. And then they're all brought together, and they're thrown in to shoot things. Like, like this is what $175 million dollars pays for, apparently. A bunch of people dressing up as crocodiles and clowns and shooting machine guns. That's where the money goes. Guys, the critics are not the bad guys in this case. If you want to know who the bad guys are, it's you. It's the comic book fans. Comic book movies can be so much better. The reason they caught on in a big way was because at one point they were excellent. We had Spider-Man 2, we had The Dark Knight, we had Batman Begins, we had X-Men 2, we had X-Men. X-Men First Class was pretty good. And we had Superman, the movie. And we had Hulk, not The Incredible Hulk, Hulk. Because despite what the audience says, the Ang Lee Hulk was unique and original. When the Marvel Cinematic Universe started, Captain America the First Avenger was good. Thor was good. The first Avengers movie was good. It, The Avengers didn't raise the bar for anything except how profitable this could be. It was just an okay movie, but it was fun. Don't get me wrong. However, since... Marvel Cinematic Universe, minus Guardians of the Galaxy, which does stand on its own two feet. The superhero movies themselves changed. They became less about being entertaining. They became less about telling a story. And they became about selling future movies. Every superhero movie these days, pretty consistently, they are, you know, they open, they do a lot of fighting, and they left the movie open for the next movie. In fact, they drop scenes in to hint at the next movie. They are picking the release schedules, um, you know, the release dates, I should say, for future movies years in advance before they have a script finished. Some people have pointed out, like, oh, well, you know, Suicide Squad, you know, they wrote the script in six months. They started making it right away because they picked out a release date and they had to meet it. So cut the people some slack. They had an excruciating deadline. No, you don't have to be have that excruciating of a deadline. You know what you could do? You could spend as much time as you need to make sure that movie is good. That's what you can do. Like, the studios can actually take their time and fix these problems before they come in theaters. And when it comes to director's cuts, I'm getting so tired of hearing how much the director's cut of Batman VC made it so much better of a movie. It didn't. Did it explain a few things? It explained a few little things. It explained why Superman didn't see the bomb. But the issue with Batman vs. Superman was not that things felt missing. It was that it felt things were tacked on. The real director's cut to improve that movie would have been to take stuff out of it. Mainly with the Doomsday stuff. Keep it focused to Batman versus Superman, or Batman and Superman, 
Leave Doomsday out, leave Wonder Woman out, they have no purpose being in this except to sell the Justice League movie. And as critics and not comic book fans, we see this. We see this. We see what this is. We watch these movies and we can tell they're selling us a product. They are selling us an installment in a franchise, in a universe of movies. When I watch Suicide Squad, I don't see character development. I don't see a story. You know what I see? I see big-name actors playing cliché parts for characters that may or may not do something important in a later movie. I mean, for Pete's sakes, there is a mid credit scene where Ben Affleck comes in as Bruce Wayne to set up Justice League, and The Flash makes a cameo appearance in Suicide Squad. Why? Because Justice League is coming out. That's why. And ignoring the Justice League aspect altogether, the villain is totally hokey. Uh, the character interactions... These characters don't talk to each other. They don't ever relate to one another. They just gripe and moan. They don't become friends. There's one scene where they're in a bar or it's like there's kind of a connection, but nothing's leading up to it. Nothing even suggests that they want to be friends. Nothing. Oh, yeah, I guess Deadshot doesn't kill Harley Quinn at some point because... Honor? The critics are right about Suicide Squad. They are right about the, you know, DCEU. And they're starting to complain about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, Captain America Civil War got better av than average reviews because it was about something, for once. There was at least a conflict. I mean, yeah, upon the second viewing, the thing completely falls apart with its illogical story holes. But you know what? At least it's about something. The superhero movies are getting stale. They're not about being stores anymore. They're about selling toys. They're about selling products. And critics are tired of it. Like, the thing with Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad is that this is the point where we're saying enough is enough. We want effort again. We want talent. We want vision again. It's been almost ten years since The Dark Knight came out, and we haven't topped it. We've never even come close. Like, and yet the problem is the fans, because the fans, they scoff at the critics. We don't know what we're talking about. We're out of touch with reality. Guys, I grew up reading comic books. I know these characters. I know who the Suicide Squad was. I actually knew who Guardians of the Galaxy were before there was a movie made about them. And I'm watching these movies, and it's like, they are not making any sense. I mean, here's the thing. If I had absolutely nothing else to watch, or if I chose to watch nothing else, then maybe I'd enjoy the movies, but that's because I am... I have a very limited view of movies. If you do no, watch nothing but science fiction, fantasy, and superhero movies, then... Some of these will look like they're better than others, but when you watch 300 movies a year, or more, like I do, you're watching Suicide Squad and it's like, this is a mess. Like, this is not finished. It, it doesn't work. I've seen enough good movies to know what a good movie looks like. This isn't one of them. And I'm not saying I can't enjoy a bad movie, like Wild Wild West, one star movie. Maybe even lower. I like that movie. It's awful, but I like it. Once Upon a Time. Terrible show. Have never liked it. Watch every single episode. I don't know why. I just feel compelled to do so. So, we will watch things and even somewhat enjoy things that are technically not good. But, 
fans of Suicide Squad, fans of comic book movies in general, need a huge wake-up call. You need a reality check. These movies are not about entertaining you. They're about selling you a product. You got all these behind-the-scenes drama, how, like, oh, the director's vision isn't getting out. Maybe you'll get the good version on DVD. No. Screw that. Benefit of the doubt goes out the window. It's in theaters. This is what we're supposed to judge it on. And you know what? If that movie is not good, we're going to call them out on it. David Iyer, like some of your movies in the past, Suicide Squad is awful. It is terrible, terrible, terrible. If there's a director's cut that's better, you know, I'll be happy to see it. But you know what? I'm sorry. Studio screwed you. Move on. I hope your next movie's better. Fans of comic books, I know you've been wanting to see a movie of the Suicide Squad. But don't come here saying, oh, well, they're trying to launch a cinematic universe. I'll give them a pass, even if this movie isn't that good. No, demand a good movie. Demand that they make a good individual movie. And if those movies add up to a better movie later on down the road, then great. I mean, look at Lord of the Rings. Those had cliffhanger endings, but you know what? They were solid movies all the way through. The Godfather trilogy. Godfather Part 1... Totally self-contained movie. Classic movie. Godfather Part 2 expanded upon The Godfather Part 1 and was still a great movie. And Godfather Part 3 was pretty good too, even if it wasn't as good as the other two movies. But the bottom line is you can expand these stories and still have them be self-contained at the same time. It's not binary. The difference is with The Godfather movies and the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and the superhero movies, is that the superhero movies are made to sell toys. These other movies were made to be great movies. Suicide Squad is not a good movie. It's not even a decent movie. Heck, if you're going about like, oh, the logo's original, well then, you know what? That's probably a clue that the movie's not very good. I mean, seriously. When was the last time someone said, ah, you know, the logo was really unique and interesting. I heard that one time, other than Suicide Squad, where I was at a screening of West Side Story, and someone said, the credits at the end of the movie were unique. And they were. They were super unique. But you know what? That was like the last thing, or one of the very last things, the presenter talked about. Before, he was talking about the love story, the characters, the music, the dancing, the shots, how, you know, they would actually dig a hole in the ground to shoot from above to make the movie feel like a stage production. Because, unless it felt like you were in a Broadway theater house, it wasn't going to work. And I can give you, I can tell you for certain... No amount of thought was put into making Suicide Squad. This kind of thought does not exist. It's all green screen, it's all special effects, and of course, it's all about future movies. <sighs> I mean, jeez. Comic book fans, wake up. Wake up. Look at where the movies are going. They're, they're just non-ending... They never accomplish anything anymore. And now they're getting to be pretty awful to boot. And you're sitting here saying, Oh, but you know, the makeup on Killer Croc looks good, so I like the way it looks, so I'll give it a pass. Oh, the studio interfered, I'll give him a pass. I'll do this, do that. No. No, no, no. When the studio interfered with Terry Gilliam's Brazil, did people go to that movie and say, well, that sucked, but I heard that the studio interfered and the director's cut is better and we'll be getting that on DVD later, so, yeah, we'll forgive them this time. No. No, they didn't. It's like, no, this movie sucks. Don't see it. And... Of course, we didn't have director's cut coming to DVDs, and thankfully, we did get the director's cut of that. Criterion sells it in a nice little um, either three-disc DVD or a two-disc Blu-ray that I have. 
um, and they have the theatrical cut and the director's cut, and you can pretty much see just how bad a studio can ruin a movie. They really can. So, I don't know. Uh, the movie's probably getting choppy at this point. Um, I swear, I will be getting a new camera at some point. But, yeah. Guys. Comic fans, I'm begging you, don't see Suicide Squad. It's like, don't think the critics are out to get you. They're, we're not here to hurt your franchises. We just want good movies. And you know what? If, if Warner Brothers is trying to launch a cinematic universe for the DC characters and all the movies suck, I'm sorry that that's how it's working out. We can't be giving them good reviews, hoping that eventually one of these will be good. When they make a good movie, we'll give it a good review. It's that simple. Until then, we're going to call it as we see it. And if and if these are all you're watching, watch some other things. Check out some of the movies we're recommending to you as opposed to this. You might actually like some of them. It doesn't mean you have to hate the superhero movies. There's just a chance that you will once you see how much better some of these other movies can be. And if you like the comic book characters too much to risk disliking the movies, I'm sorry, that's the stuff that cults are made from. All those complaints about how religious people are sheep, how churches are brainwashing you, it's the exact same thing. You're going to these superhero movies, you're brainwashed because you like the characters so much, and you want these movies to be successful so bad you can taste it. And you are willing to overlook the many, 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 many flaws of these movies. So, anyway, boy, did that go on for a while. I'm sorry, and it's like 5 a.m., so I'm going to call that. Um, maybe I'll expand upon it a little later, who knows, but yeah. Um, Monday Matt, Movie Critic Rob, Lights Camera Jackson, everyone who gave it a good review, who said that it's the critics who are out of touch because we just don't understand the movie, um, bite me. We do understand the movie. We probably understand it way better than you do, in fact. We think it's you who need to wake up. Respectfully disagree with us, that's fine, but, yeah, um... Go see a re go see a real movie, please.